So now, once we are uh, then at, at this point, and when we were earlier looking at the business model canvas as a more flexible tool, now there starts to be real value in actual business plan. And this is part of the scaling the organization. It's not about scaling the product and the customer side or not necessarily even to communicate for investors, at least not for VCs and business angels level investors. But if you're looking for something like private placement or strategic investors and so forth, then for sure it starts to be more on the real business plan level. So <clears throat> to moving away from that more uh, flexibly iterated business plan, uh, business model canvas level, uh, and the other tools that were introduced and covered in the in the uh, validation module. Now starting from the DNA canvas, and then looking at the the, the previously made SWOT and extended SWOT of how we use strengths to uh, to capture opportunities. How do we use strengths? To, to cover uh, or to work on our weaknesses and so forth. Uh, check and update the, the, the SWOT, of course, in the beginning, include that in the business plan as well. Uh, <clears throat> the canvas, you should keep that as it's a great uh, dashboard or uh, index document or uh, executive summer document for those who or constantly look at the strategy level and read the different KPIs that are attached to real processes and operations um, to, to, to kind of iterate and review the strategy. It, even if it doesn't update that often, it gives always the reminder and perspective into what's there. And in the business model canvas, you can link into deeper knowledge to different tools and even pages in the business plan. And then once the business plan is built. But now uh, building the business plan, the rationale is that now the competitive advantage, the performance of the organization starts to be deeper in, in, in also deeper in the actual organization and in the business than just on the top level. And at the same time, the top level, you can't pivot the entire business model anymore you know, twice a week or not even twice a year, not even once a year, perhaps. Maybe you can tweak some of the elements of that. So now you need to trust the validation of the business model and you are running with the business model. Maybe you introduce additional business models uh, for, for new combination of offering to uh, customer segment. But then you create a new business model for that and a separate canvas. But on the business plan, you combine all of this and you are finding the, the competitive advantages in the levels of operations in how financials are managed in, in certain tactics and strategies that are openly com uh, communicated in the business plan. And then you distribute this, this business plan among with the key partners uh, or customers or investors, depending on like the really important ones. But most importantly, it should be a document that is available at least on the, all of the operative management and all of the operative uh, levels of the company to really understand how is the business operated. Not what is the business model, not how the strategy is managed, because if you only look at business model canvas and bullet points, you're still missing tons of information after that. And if you only would start to read different documentations and KPIs and, and, uh, and, um, and spreadsheets and, and how to things separately, you would have challenge of connecting the business model canvas to all of those tools without having enough context. And <clears throat> if this is not in, in an in a elaborated uh, and rationally explained format, then you have to go have separate meetings to explain to people and most likely you still have. Like even if people read this, you still need to elaborate and expand uh, certain things for people to understand. Another format you could do is, is a video uh, session going to a 
uh, the same things, but the more you have that documented, the more you have it in a scalable format, the more the company can scale and be aligned and not become about politics and everyone doing different things and, and not everyone even knowing if someone is not living by what the company should be. So, so now it really becomes uh, relevant at this point uh, and it's also um, uh, part of the value building for the organization. The more uh, descriptive it is, the more up-to-date it is, the more functional it is, the, the, the more up-to-date it is, the, the more valuable it is, the better it works. <clears throat> so it's really for effective collaborative working, especially, specifically for distributed teams and to take into account new team member onboarding, it's important to agree and document basic operational rules for everyone and among many things, other things. And without agreed basic rules, random documents, folders and even activities will be created, information is duplicated and or disappearing in email communications, other communication channels like Slacks and Trellos and elsewhere. And again, none of that is captured in a useful format. People who live and experience the feeds know the knowledge, but again, all of the value is embedded into those individuals and their experience. When they leave, if they leave, if something happens to those people, the organization basically can't function. So, leading to making it, lead, uh, leading to making it hard or is impossible to recall things that have already been worked on, decided on, or problems already solved, or trying to build understanding of the organizations, its direction and so forth. So whether it's building that understanding or whether it's benefiting from the learnings of others and already risks and failures made, without having these types of things, uh, failures will happen again. Uh, risks will rematerialize again and there's a high onboarding uh, challenge for people to, to learn uh, to become part of the organization and be effective in delivering value. Again, it's not only about what's external, it's not only what's done for customers, it's not only that part, but the big part of being able to scale business, scale organization is to actually take care of, of the growth of the organization itself. So business plan has multiple roles, uh, functional role, help and develop, communicate, but it also has the emotional role in the organization. And for our customers, it proves to key stakeholders that the company have developed and planned business professionally. It's a tool, whether they ever even read it, if they can see a document and something that you can say, go ahead, read it, it's accurate. Uh, it's a strong message. But of course, the more it's full of uh, assumptions and not real things, then the, the, the wrong message it will send. So, so uh, to be seen as a serial entrepreneur, serious entrepreneur by mentors, investors, and most importantly, when you go to financiers like uh, business credit or you go to uh, loan finance, significant loan fines, uh, that is much like if you really know that everything is working and the company value is high, then it's significantly cheaper finance to take a loan than it is to use equity. Uh, but it has a balance that the more risk there is, uh, then the, 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 the risk factor is outsourced to external investors. The more stable, the more value there is, then you take the risk with with uh, with the loans, and and, and uh, but those also become available when the company is at that stage. So the business plan should include comprehensive description of the business and the idea, business idea summary, business model, the SWOT description of the the key team members, organization structure skills, competencies, uh, growth plan, of course, products and services as uh, the complete offering, 
customers, markets, competition, com competitors, uh, structural company, what is the company uh, legal form, uh, what is the shareholding structure beyond the operational team, uh, ownership levels, employees, uh, premises in use, locations in use, addresses in use, contact details in use, uh, accounting and financial planning, on the financial side, um, uh, financial profitability, sales calculations, forecasts, and so forth summarized for someone to consume and read into pretty much to understand, uh, I would say, 80% of everything that the company has, perhaps except all the core details of how the operations are actually uh, run because those are the, the, the real changing processes and the documentations and the tools and the communication channels that would, one would need a separate access. So for internal people, they can read and then they can get access to these places. If it's a partner, uh, investor, they can read and understand, but they don't have access to those. So then, for, for example, in the case of actual investment, uh, in, a, in a, let's say, a later round, B round, C round, uh, these become really core elements. Uh, and, uh, and then the due diligence process looks actually to validate whether the things described in business plans how well do they match with actually finding those tools and looking at those processes and seeing those KPIs and perhaps following those KPIs for a couple of months. And these become, of course, definitely matters at the exit phase. And as you can imagine, these are not something that you can kind of put together quickly at the exit phase or if you hit a rapid growth and you need significant finance to capture that opportunity, it, it takes you a lot of effort to put this in place uh, at, at when, when needed, when you would need them. Or if you have managed to get the revenue to a certain level, but you have failed to, to, to get the organization to follow and get the organization to grow, now you have an effort to basically just stop pushing the growth on the business side, that's premature scaling, and actually start to fix and put things in place in the base organization uh, so that you then improve the capability of the organization to grow with the business opportunities. So going quickly, uh, I'm not going to go through all of this. I'm just going to go through the, the, the slide by slide, the, the the questions here and the points here are communicating what types of things to communicate about the expertise of the organization. So expertise is key to communicate of why you are so good, what you have learned, what is the embedded continuous learning for your organization. And that's part of the expertise. Uh, what kind of uh, work experience different key members have, what has been their kind of growth uh, before your company and, and when joining the company, uh, specific skills, um, significant success elsewhere, and so forth. Offerings, of course, these are the elaborating on the products and services. And if you have done probably in the, in the business model canvas, you have put a lot of things in place, but you have then summarized them it's to capture all of this and really put uh, things here in place. But as you can see in the business business plan, it also not only describes what they are and uh, the, how, how those have been found, but it has this <clears throat> ongoing perspective to explain how are you staying on top of things. So it's, it goes through the KPIs. How are you measuring constantly? How are you monitoring your competition? It has these types of elements that become relevant now when you are growing and now when others are trying to win business from you because you are already in business, you are growing, others try to learn from you, they try to copy you, they want to get your customers as much as you want to get business from others. So how are you keeping tap of the navigation of the entire organization? At product level, offerings level, service level, 
and so this these types of questions you could not answer at validation phase. These types of questions uh, would have so much uh, hypothesis in them and so much assumptions if done earlier in the in the development of the company that it would make it the whole document useless. So that's why business plans are not used in the early development phase or the startup phase, but why it becomes a tool to just accept and adopt and a common as a common tool in, in the business for, for, for decades and decades. The more dynamic you, your business plan can be, and there are even some online tools that offer uh, dynamic business plans that are more connected with the documentation and the operational things and processes that you can look into, that you can then print out also this type of uh, document. But the key is not, again, what tool do you use to do something, it's what, why do you need it and what the tool is, uh, purpose in your business is and the rationale between that. So continuing on the products, you have, of course, the pricing, the whole pricing learnings, finding the optimal levels of what the pricing are. And you can see that the competitive advantages are being built and uh, inside the document and they are documented and they are becoming a big part of the value that you capture and how you communicate that value for potential partners, investors and exit opportunities. So you want to communicate, uh, document this along the way when you're doing and you want to update the business plan also uh, uh, along the way as the organization grows and have it available for any significant uh, opportunity or situation that you come across. Requiring more finance, uh, convincing a big customer, convincing a big partner, convincing or uh, opening a potential uh, exit uh, exploration opportunity and so forth. From customer's perspective, so again it's learnings from the customers and the continuous learnings, the bigger things behind that expand beyond uh, individual products. So the customer base, the customer segments, there are certain uh, personas and rationale from the perspective also when thinking of what new products, what new innovations we could introduce uh, and so forth. So all of this is value you capture for your organization. How do you describe them? How do you define? How have you segmented? And how I, how can these segments attract in, in in the different KPIs? What purchase habits you have learned that the customers have, uh, and how those could be leveraged again to different needs and so forth. So these questions are here to really help uh, as 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 tough questions and as guiding questions and as structural questions to come up with the type of content that the business model, business, uh, business plan is useful for. More from the customers. So as you can see, the whole business plan is also heavy on offerings and customer side because that is the key element where maturity of the priorities and learnings uh, come from and the value uh, for, the, for the company. But of course, it also needs to cover the, the competitor uh, and how are you tracking the competitors? Uh, what are you learning from competitors? How are you absorbing them, changing the strategies and, and so forth? So you need to see what, who are the competitors that are going away? Who are the com new competitors entering? and what you can read into them, who are the permanent competitors, are they making strategic moves, are they making, what are they doing in their operational levels, uh, and, and so forth, and then track this to their product and customer levels. So as you can see, the business plan becomes your book that you keep writing and updating as you build the organization. Again, why? Because you as founders, core manager, something can happen to you as well. And the value, if it's embedded into your heads only and not to the company uh, and the documentations like this, 
then on the exit situation, you are going to be needed very much in the transition of the organization and activities to a new company as well. So the target is to try to make the machine run also without you. And of course, with you it runs and with your team it runs even better. But to do that, you need to keep documenting. And again, business plan is the right thing to capture and summarize things uh, for various needs. <clears throat> Marketing side, same thing here, multiple different points and perspective, but also capturing the operative side and, uh, and not only the, 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 the plant or top level things. And now when you consider like really attaching like the, 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 the sub headline in a business plan, a marketing section and connecting that with the business model canvas, uh, higher level thing. Now you, you have some, some good uh, system and connections in place, how to keep, keep building this up and, and, and kind of having your virtual organization structure in place. Uh, sales side, uh, looking at uh, looking at those KPIs that that were covered, the types of KPIs again depending on your business. But now you have um, other things like how have you expanded the offering of the product? Where is it? Where is the customers coming from? Where are you getting your uh, products and services available now? Uh, effectiveness. Uh, how well is the sales team performing? What is the, the hiring uh, process looking like? How many people you have on commission? Uh, describing the sales process and so forth. And now you can also understand then when you have things like this, you can you can take this and you can work with a, a experienced sales executive. You you can read into or you can learn new aspects of things and then you can look at, okay, let's take a sales section in our business plan. Let's look at the whole sales part, all of the tools, all of the KPIs, all of the HR, all of the processes, and let's work on the sales now for the next three months and see what we can change in that. Let's make those changes, let's update it, and then, okay, let's look at the financials, what we can do in the financials. So, so the point here is that in the beginning, early parts of creating something out of nothing. You have to work on so many variables in so uh, extensive level overall that you can spend very little time of it. But at the same time as you're scaling the organization, you are not constantly changing everything all the time. So now you have more time to find competitiveness, find better com conversion rates out of sub-segments within the whole organization. And then you should have KPIs and people flagging things that if we can change here 10%, it will have such a big impact in our business. If we can change here, that will have such an impact. Or if we can't fix this, this will start to become a drag for the whole organization and so forth. So now then it's also then separately describing the organization and resources in more detail. So this includes all the details about tools. We use Trello, Slack, whatever those may be. We have this type of documentation purpose. We have a quality system. This, whatever those are, those are or like the more there is, the more they are real, the more they are there only for the purpose that they actually build value, the more valuable the whole company becomes. This is how you build the value to the company. It's not only the sales. If sales, if all the sales is based on five people capability of being creative and sell and deliver creatively and all that knowledge is embedded into those people's head, if someone would buy that company, what do they actually buy? They buy five people. What would those people like to do after they have been sold? Be free with their money to start something new perhaps, to, to take a break, whatever that is. They're going to be stuck with the new organization and continue to deliver those results and then start to do this documentation. So, various points here to look into, then moving on to the 
financials, capital requirements, and, and plan. So now it's also then to connect all of those different acti activities and organizations and things into real financials. The same way as totally different and separately uh, from the sales side of it. So again, not only looking at the sales, not only looking at the profitability of individual products and services and so forth, but actually the entire organization. Efficiency, the financials, where does the costs occur? Where is the most cost? And then how do these uh, all come together? So profitability calculation at the whole organizational level. So looking first at the sales and profitability of individual products per customer segments, but then profitability for, uh, compared to budget, budgeted uh, profitability, sales budgeting, uh, breakdowns, known decisions, known existing uh, uh, deliveries or agreements in place, and, and so forth. But the profitability calculation uh, is mainly to look at this is our cost structure, and basically then uh, this is how much sales with this uh, profitability level we need to deliver to be able to get to break-even level. So how much is our running cost at the time, and then splitting that down into uh, relevant items. And then profitability calculation, you look two sides. On one side you have the, the, the cost side, and then on the other side you have the target sales side. So now we're knowing these are the products, these are the, 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 the profitability of, of uh, this project products, these are the customers, then dividing that, that with this cost base we need to sell this much in money and considering it will be going to these segments of customers and with these offering some products and services we need to sell this many of each of these to be profitable. So if we sell less of this, we still need to sell more of this. So now then you can have having separate uh, sales forecasts and estimations of these. Now you can start to cross match the profitability, the cost side of that uh, with, with the sales forecasts and uh, how much sales need to be generated. On the growth forecast, Basically, uh, this should come from the targets you can have in the DNA canvas. Also on the roadmap level, milestone level, you can have certain revenue targets that you are hitting, but it doesn't give much value if that, that can be reverse engineered into real actions, running real processes with real people, with real um, cost structure also in place uh, to try to to, cap, to get that. So, so it's really making the top-down thinking and targeting to meet the bottom-up real actions and, 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 and then finding, finding where the problems and gaps are and then making adjustments on both sides if needed. Increase the targets, decrease the target, increase the efficiency and so forth. And uh, and it needs to be worked at such level that, that many people can take part, they can read the KPIs, they can understand, they can trust the KPIs that that's the reality. And, and, uh, and then if people leave, that shouldn't have big, too much of an impact to what's going on in, in the organization. So build your company machine like a racing car and run your business like a factory. So it's really like, think of it like your company, your organization is a custom machine, it's a racing machine that you really want to make working efficiently, be able to follow the market opportunity, to capture as much of that market opportunity effectively, to be able to, to be understood, to be able to manage, to be able to get other experts to look at, to improve, okay, let's put a better calculator here. Let's put a more, more, more uh, uh, better fitting pistons. Let's put a lighter pistons. Let's put a more, let's put a 
turbo in it, let's put a cooling system so that the machine doesn't overheat if we put. So that's that's the custom building an exceptional machine, and that is the value then what it can ca capture from the markets. But when you deliver the customers, make that as little as custom as possible. Make it something that runs like a factory. So if you think individual process as a mini factory line or part of the factory assembly part, make one work and then keep running it, make another one, make another one, make another one, then take it to the offering level, take one offering to customer segment, make one, make another one, make another one, make another one, and make each of those lines run like a factory line. But the machine that's running that factory, make that custom. If you improve it, keep improving it, make sure it doesn't break, don't overrun it. Uh, so you need to have enough KPIs in place. Not only looking at how fast it can run, uh, but also you need to pay attention for how long it can run, when do you need to change the oils, and, and, and make, keep it running. The bigger the machine you're building, Perhaps lower it is to begin in the beginning, but once you get that running full steam, you have many years to tweak it and improve it until you need to re totally replace it. But because we are not talking about real machines, of course you can go and go and change a piston in a running machine. So that's that's just an analogy here.